On the build show today, I'm going to be talking about Zip 1.5. Little background here, you know, about a year or two ago, my buddy Doug Cameron introduced me to a method that I coined Zip 2.0, where basically he used Huber Zip system sheathing on the outside of the house, but he didn't use their tape. He used liquid flash on the entire outside of the building. That's this. It's a fluid applied flashing. It comes in several different sizes and varieties. But what he did was he eliminated the tape and used nothing but that on the outside. Now I love that idea because in theory it seems like you're going to have an ultra tight house with Zip 2.0 and it gets rid of all the critics who say what about overdriven fasteners. But as I've had some time to digest and really see some other job sites including some of the stuff that my friend Jake Bruton is building in Missouri, I'm going to talk to you today about what I think is a more economical way to get to a really similar final product and I'm going to call that Zip 1.5. Let's get going. All right, so here's the premise. When you're installing Huber Zip System Sheathing, this is a sheathing that's doing double duty for us. It's going to provide sheer wall for the house, but it's also our air and water barrier via this green facer that's been adhered to the OSB underneath. And when you nail that, there's a lot of critics who say, hey, this is a weak point. This is a failure system on the house. You've got that nail penetrating. Now these two nails, these are like textbook perfect. These are like perfectly right where you want them, just right about flush with the facer. It's doing everything it needs for both uh, shear and for water and air sealing. But what happens when you get one of these, an overdriven fastener? And honestly, it's really easy to do this. I've got a fantastic crew. We've adjusted our air hoses. We've used a lot of heat resist system. It's not like this is our first install, but it's really hard to get perfection on every nail hole. And so over the years, there's been a lot of chatter about this. And I've thought about it a lot myself because if water were to run down this wall and, one, and run right in, that would be a, a huge problem for this house, right? But you know what? Let's think about this for a minute. I'm also using Huber Zip System Sheathing on my roof. And on my roof, I did the same thing. I just taped the seams and I used the same nail guns. We've got some nails that are kind of perfect and some that are overdriven. I got a two inch rainstorm this past weekend and I didn't have any leaks. I don't have any water penetration from that whatsoever. And I don't even have a roof on yet. This is still just exposed to the elements. What happens when we get our siding, our roofing, our rock, our cladding on? Not nearly as much water is going to make it back there. Some will, but not nearly as much. So these nails are going to have quite a bit less load on them. Now also, I, I just finished a house not too long ago, or I finished a video, I should say, on a house that had no exterior house wrap on it whatsoever. The builder used uh, oriented strand board as the sheathing and then put nothing on top of it and then rocked over the house. And what happened on the nail holes that were, you know, four feet, five feet over the ground like this on that house? No difference. There was no issues. There was no water. There was no degradation of the OSB because the OSB wasn't getting pounded by water. Now on the other hand, as I've remodeled for 25 years, where do I find all the issues? And just like at my personal house here that I'm building, this back wall of the house had massive issues on this back side of the house because it had no gutters. The water was spilling over and splashing back onto the old T111 siding. The bottom foot was a mess. It was a disaster. But up here, four or five feet up, no issues whatsoever. And so this combined with all this years of knowledge and seeing um, things out there leads me to believe that, you know what, if we tape those seams and we have a couple of nails that are overdriven, there's not an issue. We don't have problems that are going to happen. However, we should be concerned with that bottom one to two feet on the house. That's where all the rot and mold happens. So let's detail that bottom one to two feet really well. Now you've seen on, on a lot of my videos using liquid flash or other fluid applied flashing products to connect the sheathing to the foundation. That's a great detail. This house is a little different because I've got foam going on this house. So what I did was I put a two by two on the bottom and that's going to receive the foam on the outside. I've got two inches thick of foam. So I taped that so that water running down the face of this wall will run out. Behind that I've got a fluid applied flashing as well. To, to kind of air seal and bug seal that joint. But from there on up, you can see all I've got is the tape. 
I've seen this tape for a long time now. This came into the market over 20 years ago. And when it first came out, I got to, I got to be honest, I was super skeptical. I thought tape, tape is never going to work. And yet as I've seen it uh, in places like the University of Texas Durability Lab uh, and seen what it'll do, even expose the elements for several years, I've been really, really impressed. This is top of the line here. This is acrylic adhesive that when you use a J roller on top of that and give it a good roll, that J roller is wetting the tape into the substrate. Now this is Huber's J roller. You actually can buy this on Amazon. And when you're applying this tape, you want to give it a good roll. And this one actually has some typewriter letters on there, a Z, that are going to show you if you look closely at the tape that it's been rolled. That rolling is critical because what you're doing is you're, you're compressing that adhesive into the substrate and you're what they call wetting it. That's what the chemists call it. You're wetting that adhesive onto the substrate. And this green substrate here, the facer, is made to accept that tape. It's a beautiful substrate for this. It's absolutely perfectly matched. And so as a result, this is basically chemically bonded to that and it's not coming off. I've been really, really impressed with the research that I've seen on this. And just anecdotally, for instance, I was at a house that Jake Bruton uh, did in Missouri uh, six months ago. He did a whole house with zip. He didn't cut out the windows. He just taped it. And he had a crazy low blower door score, uh, a blower door score of like, you know, 0.16 ACH50, which means that there's no airflow through those overdriven nails. And if there's no airflow, there's certainly not gonna be water flow. Now let's get into the ZIP 1.5. 1.0 would be just tape. That's kind of their original system, just using tape on the seams. I think that's a great method. But let's go one step further. Let's go to that 0.5. And here's what we're going to do. First off, let me uh, show you all the tools involved. I'm going to put some gloves on just to keep this off my hands. But it, it will peel off and it's, uh, it's, there's no chemicals in there that will hurt you. Uh, it's actually uh, free of all the red list stuff. Again, I would highly recommend you use this. I can't show it on this house because I've got a different detail. But if your zip sheathing is coming down to your concrete foundation, do that liquid flash in that section. At least an inch or two down onto the foundation, tape it off. And then I would go up several inches, two or three inches, maybe uh, at a minimum, as much as maybe six inches if you want to, just to give a little extra durability at the bottom. And then I would take one $40 tube of liquid flash. That's probably going to do the whole house for you. And I would go around and I would only concentrate on the bottom one to two feet of the house, let's say. So I'm looking at anything that's two foot and down on this house. And I'm going to look at those nail holes there. And just for extra security, this is my $40 security blanket here. I'm going to use some liquid flash on just those nail holes. And honestly, this is just a little bit of extra precaution. I love a good belt and suspenders. And what I like about this too is anybody could do this. A homeowner could do this. If you were building your own house, the framer could do this, the builder could do this. And I'm just gonna hit any nail holes that I'm worried about, or really any nails at all if you, if you want to, all the way around the house. Now, I should have my tool belt on, I'm sorry I don't. But keep one of these in there too. This is a, uh, a Bondo scraper or a card scraper. This one happens to be zip logoed, but you could use it any one that you find. It's just a flexible scraper. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scrape that down. I don't want to leave a big bubble on there because it's going to cause a problem for my siding contractor. I'm just going to scrape those flat like that. And again, I'm not worried about going up to the gable. I'm going to just do this on the bottom two feet. Now my house has some overhangs. You can see above me we've started building them on top. This is a two foot overhang, so I've got a pretty good umbrella. If I had no umbrella, let's say I was building a real modern house with no overhangs, I might take a look around the house and see if there's other areas that I was worried about. For instance, if I had a scupper that was dumping water in some particular place, if I had a valley coming in that I thought was going to dump some water and I was concerned maybe my homeowners wouldn't put gutters in, I might look for some other areas above the two foot line. But you know what, for the majority of houses in America that have an overhang that are built with traditional, more traditional architecture, this is going to be all you need. And look at that. I've used how much of this tube? I think I've used maybe an inch or two of that tube. And I've already gone one, two, three, four sheets, five sheets of plywood over some 16 feet in from my corner. 
I bet I can do probably my whole house if I'm just worried about that bottom two feet with this. Guys, I wanna thank my friends at Huber. Uh, they're an annual partner of mine. This isn't necessarily a sponsor video for them. I just wanted to make this because I think this is an important topic. My friend, uh, Christine Cronin, also has some great information on this. I'll put a link to her website that she talks about fasteners. So if you wanna go a little deeper on this and get her take, I'm not the only expert uh, that's saying this, but I think Zip 1.5 is a great way to go. This is gonna take advantage of all the air tightness and waterproofing benefits of Zip. It's gonna give you a little extra protection in that bottom two feet that typically houses as I remodel have issues that I find. And it's gonna give us a really tight, really efficient, really well-built house. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber to The Build Show, hit that subscribe button. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. And if you wanna go see what some of my other builder friends are doing with Huber Zip on their projects, I've got several builders and a fantastic architect that are shooting videos on their job sites all across the country. We're publishing six days a week to buildshownetwork.com. Go check out the link in the description to Build Show Network and subscribe to our newsletter. Every Friday we've got a newsletter that will tell you what's new on that channel. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.